So that was fun. So, Happy New Year. 2022 has been off to a lovely start. I apologize for those watching this in real time. It's been a, <laughs> it's been a quick minute since I put out my last video. I got one out just before the Christmas holidays. Got to see my family for Christmas. That was amazing. Got back, got sick. Finished being sick and then work went crazy because other people at work had sick. So it's probably gonna be a few weeks before I get back to my roughly weekly video releases. I've got something kind of big in the works. Fingers crossed it works out. And if it does, y'all know about it fairly soon. For today's video, I've got a toy. I have no idea how to use it. It is the button. Several of you messaged me saying, hey, do you know that you could just get a BMS button to turn on the BMS? So that's what this is. I don't know where to plug it in. Uh, it's got like five wires or six wires, so it should be fairly easy to figure out where to plug it in. But I didn't even finish unwrapping this. I wanted to do it on camera so that you lovely people can join me while I learn how to use this mount. Now, it's got this ring on the bottom. When I saw the advertisement for it, it looks like it's meant to mount onto a handlebar. So I'm assuming this is just a handlebar mount and if I don't need it, I can get rid of it. Maybe it's an ammeter. You're supposed to put one of the wires through so it can count the power going in and out of the battery. I don't know yet. Let's go find out. So as always, the first thing we need to do is start turning everything off. I have forgotten to turn this thing off so many times. I am absolutely astounded the batteries are still any good in it. So that's the DC voltage. <sighs> On this side, I should still have full power. Yep, 54 volts. Turn the battery off. Yep, she's dead. Now, I need to get to the BMS this, or do I? Huh. I was getting ready to pull the whole face off thinking that the connector was going to be buried somewhere down there in the BMS. See the connectors back there? I think one of them are gonna be one of the ones we need. I'm still gonna to have to disconnect it at some point to shut the BMS off to make sure that we can actually, actually, do I? Maybe I don't. So. I'm hoping this thing here comes off and I can just use this. That's gonna be a bit of bulk in there. Well, anyways, one thing at a time. So, it comes on a lead that apparently is supposed to come apart. Oh, haha, -ha, there it goes. One, two, three, four, five. Six. So it's a six pin connector. What are my options? How many pins do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know if it's going to fit into either of those. Let me do a zoom video. Zoom video is not the application. Does this make it easier for you to see on camera? I don't know if it does or not. Can you even see that? Well, I'll have to consider this an experiment. So, I have the GPS and RS-485 connector here. That side, you can't see it because of the balance leads, but it's the... Oh, yes, you can. It says CAN bus right there. CAN bus. But I believe that has... One, two, three... Come on, don't shake. One, two, three, four connectors. That one has one, two, three, four connectors. So clearly, neither of those are for this. I'm going to have to pull the BMS out after all. Pooh. So will you. So it be. Those are the temperature sensors. Well, I'm going to take it out. Hopefully it's visible on one of the sides. Safety McGargles. Random hair elastic off the floor. I figured something out a long time ago. If you have something that you frequently lose, and it's not something that's too expensive, like pencils, pens, and hair elastics, as you lose them, buy more. And then you'll lose those. And then you'll buy more. And what happens, I find, is you get to a, a point where you're losing the new ones at the same rate that you're finding the old ones, and then everything's in simpatico. The final box design, I don't know what I'm going to use yet for access ports, but it is not going to be this threaded bolt thing. This takes far too long. 
maybe just a little cam lever that I can lift up and have it slide off and then snap it down and it cams and locks into place. I'll have to think about that some more. Okay, now the BMS is off, but the power coming off here is still available. So time to start getting careful again. Oh right, I had done it so that it could swing up like this. You know what, I am going to take this off, make my life a bit easier. I think that was a, is that a 10? Oh, uh, maybe I should take the ground first. I don't know how sensitive it is to the, if I pull this wire off, I'm gonna lose one of the pins here, will that cause a problem? Oh, but then the same thing happens when I pull the ground. Hmm. Yeah, not being able to power the BMS down is, is really quite annoying. Well, here goes nothing. Okay, the BMS shut down. If it starts back up, disconnecting the negative first worked. If it doesn't, don't do that. <laughs> uh, it's JK BMS. It's... A lot of things are very appealing about it. A lot of things are not. Okay, now I can open this up a lot easier. Let's start seeing what we're dealing with. No, it's definitely not either of those. There's no connector down here. There's no connector here. There's no connector along here. Where the hell do I plug this thing in? Huh? I really like how I can slide this back and just expose the front. I really like that about this design. Okay. AliExpress. G-Kong LCD with active switch. Yep, that's what I bought. There's somebody who bought the same setup. I bought two BMSs and one LCD from the seller and expected to be assembled to I expected to assemble two batteries and have and to have one LCD on my vehicle. The result, both BMS sent without LCD interface. The earliest version of BMS has no LCD interface. All products are slowly customized according. Son of a! Thanks, G Kong, for letting me waste my money. I bought the BMS from you. Then I ordered this. It would been really nice if you had told me that this wasn't compatible because my BMS is too old. Before purchasing LCD, please check whether the BMS has LCD interface. Secondly, in case of non human damage, we support the repair for one year. Well, there you go. My love for JK is diminishing. All right, so I had another... God damn it. Why would you put in the comments of a review, please check to see if you have the LCD interface and not have it somewhere prominent on the ad to say, before you buy this, make sure your BMS is supported. I know exactly why. Less idiots like me would buy them. Ever want to see what a pissed off Digimur looks like? Hi. <laughs> One of my commenters posted with an idea on how to boot this and they were suggesting that the voltage from the, ah, come on brain, the voltage from the test probes of my multimeter might be enough to jumpstart this and get it alive. So let's try that out. I mean, what else am I going to do? I'm so unimpressed, I may do something relatively dramatic about it. More on that later. Oh yeah, I wanted to put my sticker on it. The labor maker is able to do a nice little logo for the BMS. There we go. How cute is that? If you know your effing product is not compatible with a product you sell for it, why wouldn't you post that prominently? Ugh. Okay. 
I'm getting so pissed off, I'm going to risk breaking this. Got to chill. <laughs> I say right before I break it. Isn't this off to a lovely start? Whatever. Yeah, the last time I was focusing on not where the terminals were, I got a shock. I need to be careful about this. All right, and the BMS is still off, as you can tell by there's no blinking light there. The commenter suggested that the stray voltage that comes out of doing, was it a voltage probe? On this, should be enough to boot the BMS. So what I need to do is run this across the two sides of the BMS. One side of the BMS goes to here, and the other side of the BMS goes to the bottom of the smart shunt. So, or maybe it was continuity test. That would make sense because it's putting a voltage out on the line. Okay, so I've got one down there. Nope, let's try measure voltage. I'm getting minus 50 volts. Let's switch the polarity around. I'm getting 52 volts, but the BMS is not booting. Okay, so that didn't work. Was it diode test maybe? Hopefully I don't damage my, hopefully I don't damage my multimeter. No, oh, diode test. Nope, didn't boot. Okay, so that, I don't think that works. 1.5, 3, 4.5. Don't laugh, it's how you use it. I'm not gonna waste good capstan tape on that. Let's make ourselves, all right, let's see if we can make ourselves a 4.5 volt source. And if 4.5 volts is easy, even enough to boot it, if it really has to be exactly five volts. At the start of this video, I was really excited about this JK VMS. Right now, I want to eat the thing. This is such a piss off. Is it my 18 gauge? 12 gauge? What size is this wire? It is 18 gauge. Man, that's some heavy shielding for 18 gauge. Let's see if I can strip it with a 12 gauge. Yep. 14 works as well. Taping together batteries. This is something I have not done since I was but a wee lass. Hi, Mom and Dad. Sorry for all the toys I destroyed when I was a kid. Clearly, I never learned my lesson not to take things apart and break them. Okay, make sure that's a good connection. Where's the multimeter? Just making sure this first tape is a solid connection. Yeah, 3.3. Oh, 3.3, right, because they're above their nominal voltage right now. And this would make red green proud. All right. <laughs> oh, this is janky. I love it. 4.8. I gotta put some wires on it, make it a little bit sketchier still. Okay, let's see if that one's good. Yep, that one's good. The last one. Don't short it. Don't cross the beams. Okay, if this isn't the jankiest shit ever. Okay, across these two leads, I have 4.8 volts. Watch about here. Hopefully you can see it. I'm not blocking it. Well, that worked. For all of the current fail, those felt pads are not one of them. I like those. So this is gonna be a relatively short video because my whole plan for this video is to show this control panel and button. Thanks, G Kong. Really appreciate that. Really. I'm starting to love you. I don't know if I love you anymore. When you buy a special part that is supposed to do, among other things, turn the device you bought on because there's no built-in way to do that. And it doesn't work because your brand new BMS is too old. And you have to resort to something as incredibly hacky as this. I mean, and this works. I'm not impressed, <laughs> not impressed at all. Okay, so seeing as there's not gonna be much of a video, why don't I talk about what's going to be happening in the next weeks and months? I have been very carefully selecting all of the components 
so that I can collect data from them. In my day job, I do data collection analysis and then use that analysis to automate actions. It doesn't matter the details of it. Point is that code is open source and I kind of want to port it to my battery system, to the boat eventually entirely. In order for this to work, I need to be able to collect all of this data and pump it into a database. So over the next little while, I'm going to be spending a lot more time trying to figure out how to talk to all of this equipment, the Victron Quattro, which I need to do to figure out how to charge this JKBMS up to 100% anyway, the MPPT controllers, which I need to figure out how to configure so that they will charge the, the battery up all the way. I've got the Serbo GX, which apparently you can install Node Red on it directly, I think. If not, they have a boot image that you can install on an SD card for Raspberry Pis called Venus OS. And on there, you can definitely install this Node Red program. I've never used it before, but apparently it's a really good tool for collecting data on the Victron, um, on the Victron gear. So that's going to be something I'm going to be doing over the next little while. I have bought a RS-485 to USB adapter, uses a standard DB9 connector, which if you've been around computers for any period of time, you would have remembered them as serial ports. The JKBMS has an optional RS-485 connector that, or adapter that I bought. I have one of these one wire serial adapters. I'm hoping this is the right pin out and I will be able to, I'm hoping I can connect the bare wires that come out of the JKBMS RS-485 adapter onto the three pins. Hopefully they're wired up the right way. If they're not, I'll just cut this open and run them indirectly. I'll figure something out. Once that's done, I'm going to figure out how to talk to the JKBMS directly. Thankfully, as much as I'm annoyed right now at JKBMS for this whole button and booting problem, they do have GitHub links, which I'm gonna provide down below in the description that talk about the protocol, how to actually talk to it over RS-485. So that's gonna be something I'm gonna be looking into. And one week from now, I am going on a little bit of a road trip. And if things go well, I have something really big in the works. If it works out, you'll know in about a week and a half, two weeks. So sorry, this is a relatively short video, especially after being away for, I think it's been almost three or four weeks since I did my last video. Sorry about that. Um, it's going to be a few more videos before I get back to a semi-regular schedule. I know I don't, have a, I don't have a set release schedule, but I'm trying for the once a week thing. It'll be a few weeks until I can start to get back into that cycle. In the meantime, I'm Digital Mermaid. Thanks for watching, even the frustrating ones. I'll uh, see you soon.